former UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has mentioned that the era of global warming is over and the era of global boiling is starting. Because of global warming, cooling will increase significantly by the demand. We want to meet the aspirations of every citizen in the country and also every economic sector. That requires a huge cooling demand and cooling solutions deployed in different parts of the country. To provide cooling in a sustainable way, district cooling surely is the best way to go. As per the India Cooling Action Plan, district cooling is an alternative technology which can provide an energy efficient cooling solutions to the country. What district cooling system does is essentially provide a centralized cooling to create a cooling network for providing thermal comfort to occupants of buildings within a large network. This area could be a big city, it could be a large uh, district or a neighborhood, or it could be an IT campus or a university campus. The Gip City has very successfully showcased that district cooling as a concept can be easily implemented in greenfield projects. Well, I understand that at such a large area of over 800 acres, it may not be feasible to use any other method except district cooling, which is a viable method of doing air conditioning uh, for the entire city. Had it been so for the city, it would have been 2,40,000 like tons of conventional air conditioning. But with district cooling, we only have to install around 170,000 tons of air conditioning, and which is a remarkable saving on the capex. But also, if we see the electrical demand, that also substantially comes down by, by around 50%. District cooling system, in my opinion, offers four distinct advantages. The first one is that it has sustainability built into its core. For example, you know, we have recently added a solar power generation unit with the DCS and it has definitely brought down our IKW. We are the major consumer of the wastewater the city generates. That is very unique for district cooling. Besides that, there are many other advantages of bringing district cooling into cities like this. One is the heat island effect. The center of the city remains cool and all the heat is dissipated on these sites. The second big advantage is the operational cost reduction and the efficiency that you can build in into a district cooling plant. Now, this is a mass production of air conditioning. Obviously, the production cost comes down and the efficiency of the overall system is the best. Saving electricity in a thermal storage is so much cheaper, so much easier. And by doing so, you avoid any issues during nighttime and you remove the peak electricity consumption. The third important aspect is uh, that it can be reliable and scalable. District cooling plant has the ability to adapt itself and to provide the increased cooling load in a dynamic fashion. The rate of failure on, on these machines are also less. The backup systems are available. And lastly, one of the most critical commercial uh, advantages of a district cooling system is that it frees up a lot of real estate space, which would otherwise be occupied by chillers, fans, pumps within the basement. And that translates into real money for developers. So Gift City is the first city in India where we are providing cooling as a service to all the residential, commercial and recreational areas. Just like your gas or water or electricity, similarly cooling is also being built on a monthly basis and the consumer pays for that. So we have automatic system called SCADA which operates and monitors the entire system and helps us in efficiently delivering the services to each and every customer at the required demand. All this makes the district cooling actually very user friendly and a dependable source. For any kind of new technology, it's important to have the proper regulation and standards in place. Current challenges that the DCS face is a high initial capital investment that is required to execute these projects and also the lack of integration at the city planning level. I also want to draw a parallel with what has happened in European countries. They have been providing district heating solutions for multiple decades, for over 50, 60 years, because it covers planning, it covers zoning, it covers tariff design, it covers utilities, what kind of taxes, what kind of incentives that you need to provide. 
these are the elements that we need to really look at very closely and put in place for this technology to become mainstream. These systems have not only been uh, successful today, but they have always been successful in the past. If you consider Middle East, Singapore and all other places, they have been there for a long time. Bureau of Energy Efficiency has a long-standing history running with ZIZ and we are happy that ATEEE is the partner in this project. And we know that district cooling can play a crucial role in decarbonizing the power sector and which will ultimately help us in achieving our net zero climate commitments. Our goal is to establish a new benchmark that will become a reference point for other countries in the global south to emulate. We appeal to the government to bring together Ministry of Power, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, along with Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Ozone Cell, municipal corporations, and urban and local bodies to fortify all aspects of the district cooling system. For a city as smart as Gift City, we needed a system as smart as district cooling system. District cooling is the cheapest and environmental best option. Revolutionizing thermal comfort in urban habitats through district cooling system for a greener tomorrow is the need of the hour.